Hey, this is Al from Transformational Gaming. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe. No, no, this is not a figment of your imagination or anything like that. No, this is Al doing a video. <laughs> um, but today, uh, I felt compelled to do this video. <clears throat> and by the way, please comment, like, subscribe. But I felt compelled to do this video because... If you follow me or whatever, or you get a hold of this video, you know that I'm on Twitter. And I come in contact with a lot of different people on Twitter. And one of the people that I love to come in contact with is some of the dudes from Digital Foundry. I love their work. I think they do great work for the channel. And specifically, John Letterman, because he's a retro guy. And I'm a retro guy as well. But one of the things about retro is that some things were made to stay in the past. <laughs> they were not made to come back and haunt us like a, a ghost or Jason Voorhees or whoever, <laughs> right? Uh, some things, they live, they come out, they die. Meaning that they have their time for being in the market and they have what they call a life cycle. Meaning that they have their time in the sun for a certain amount of time. They get sold. They get popular, right? Products I'm talking about. They get popular. They have their time on the shelves. And then guess what? The end of their life cycle comes and something else come out that's much, much better to replace them. And fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, right? These things has happened for CRTs. This life cycle has happened for CRTs. CRTs started te television right television started out as an offshoot for radios right so they started off as an offshoot for radios and then they wanted to be able to deliver the news where you can actually watch the news right and so this all happened in uh 19 uh 1899 right or 1900 now we're not going to go back that far on cath ray twos but let's just say around the 80s and 90s these things called video games came out right these televisions were not made for video games okay the whole cathode technology crts those were not made for video games so with that being said we have the advent of lcd technology now without going into when lcd were made as lcd technology has become more prominent video games were definitely made in mind not only video games but movies home theater technology all of this stuff was brought to mind as the technology for lcds has become more of a in vogue product right because at the end of the day that's what all this is it's nothing but product <laughs> okay so but the point i'm trying to say is is that lcd has its advantages that I'm going to go over and CRT has their advantages and you've been watching Eurogamers John has been definitely on a evangelic mention right to evangelize how great CRTs are compared to LCD now I don't think his points are that LCD is a bad technology I don't want to, I don't want to put words in his mouth but I do want to go over why we are in the state that we're in right now versus what we were with the CRT. So why move away from cathode ray tube? And why did the advent of LCD become so popular? Well, the fundamental issue is clarity. Clarity is the biggest issue with cathode ray tubes. The real issue is that, man, you had all type of distortion coming from the inputs, even from high bandwidth products like coaxels coaxels were like notorious for having ghosting image and image of color bleeding those issues were very prominent on the crts or the tube televisions as they call it nowadays and we know that other products exist like the crts for arcades and some of the computer monitor crts but those were like one percent of the CRT market as a whole and another point I want to bring up is that given time the CRT televisions for the monitors and for the arcades went bad over time as well 
I mean, given enough time, three, four years, you plan video games or using a CRT for developing applications or using your CRT for computer work or whatnot, those TVs went bad pretty quickly, introducing all type of artifacts and really LCDs do not produce. And as I look at some of the images, I mean, it really drags down the quality of the game. In comparison of the LCD, I mean, some of the noise that would come through the composite cables, which was susceptible to noise, was really bad and dragged down the quality of the image. Another fundamental problem with CRTs or tube televisions were the color bleeding. Now, color bleeding in particular always disturbed me. That was always an issue I had, even growing up in the 90s or whatnot every time i would buy a television i would hope that that television did not introduce color bleed color bleeding is one of the ugliest the most notoriously ugliest way to display pictures now i know again the traditional crt rka type of televisions computer monitors did not have this as bad but with the advent of lcds this has all been but mitigated especially with oled televisions and other type of lcd technology yes i know that there are other issues with lcd and i'm going to talk about them real quick but to me this is a deal breaker any product that introduced these ugly artifacts these are not just artifacts these are ugly artifacts that you can see very clearly whether the pitch is moving or not. Um, I want to talk about the RF switch box and the composite cable. Now, this was a point of contention with John because his argument was, well, you can have LCDs that have composite and RF switch boxes hooked up to the television. That's not my point. My point is, is that if you're looking at anything that does not have a HDMI input, then it's probably going to be susceptible to noise. These were terrible ways to have video inputted into your television. That's because you may have a home theater system. And if that home theater system is causing noise over the video line or even the audio line, it can introduce noise and distort the signal. And being that these signals is already being processed and dithered down, you're going to get an even worse picture, just like the sonic picture I showed earlier. So that was my whole point with two televisions they only had two inputs usually they only came with two inputs and that's the RF feed for the RF switch box and they came with the composite input for the RCA cable and those were technologies that needed to be improved upon and they have been and with the advent of HDMI cables you are able to get a higher resolution and a higher color bandwidth overall now, am I saying cathode ray technology is all bad? No, absolutely not. Cathode ray is basically how most of us got introduced to gaming. And with that being said, yes, there are some great things about cathode ray. You don't have to really worry about resolution like you do with LCDs because they're not pixel based, right? Also, the motion blur is hardly there. So, you don't have to rely on post-processing effects and stuff like that for cathode rays. So, yes, there are some advantages to cathode ray, but they don't meet or even exceed the advantages for LCD. So, this is it. My family's done woke up. So, <laughs> I guess it's time for me to go ahead and get on with today. But, uh, what is your thoughts on cathode ray tubes or CRTs? I think they have their place in history, but that's where they belong in history. This is Al from Transformational Gaming, over and out.